You can use the trapezoidal rule to estimate the area under a curve. Uh, you're not going to be able to find the actual area under a curve until you take calculus. But the estimation is pretty simple uh, if you know how to find the area of a trapezoid. And of course, hopefully you remember the area of a trapezoid is equal to half the height times the sum of the bases. Uh, the absolutely key thing when you do these problems is to make a decent sketch. So you'll notice here I actually did not put a scale on my graph because uh, I really want a drawing that's going to be easy for me to visualize. Um, I'm going to be pulling the points um, off a table or substituting into the function to get those values. So I know that x squared plus 1 is a parabola that's kind of raised up off the x-axis. Uh, loosely speaking, it's doing something kind of like this. Um, you'll notice the integral is between values of 1 and 4. So we're looking at a point here at 1, we're looking at a point over here at 4. And uh, you do have to be told or, or make a decision about how many rectangle, um, how many trapezoids to use when you break the shape up uh, because there are three units between 1 and 4. We're going to use three trapezoids here. So I'm going to do one at 2 and I'm going to do one with a base at 3. So this is actually very simple. What I suggest is putting the y coordinate of points along your sketch of your curve. And what that's going to do is it's going to allow you to set up your trapezoids very easily. Uh, if I put 1 into the function x squared plus 1, uh, that gives me a value of 2. So this point here is 2 units up. If I put a value of 2 into the function x squared plus 1, I get a value of 5, telling me that that point is 5 units up. Uh, if I put 3 into x squared plus 1, I get 10. So that's 10 units up. And then finally, if I put 4 into there, I get a value of 17. Okay, Those are going to end up being the lengths of the bases of my trapezoids when I break this shape up into trapezoids. So you can see, here's a trapezoid. It's got a side going along like that. Uh, here's another trapezoid. And again, you'll see these trapezoids are going to slightly overestimate the area. Uh, the curve is going to dip just a little bit through below that straight segment that we draw in. Uh, but it's very, very close. And then my last trapezoid will be right here. So you can see there are three trapezoids. We're looking at uh, this one, this one, and this one. And we just need to find their areas. The strange thing is that the height is actually here. That's one. And these are the two parallel bases. So turned on its side, but still a trapezoid. So if I want to find the area of that first trapezoid there, its area is going to be half the height, which is 1, times the sum of its bases. If you look back at that original trapezoid, the base lengths are 2 and 5, those y coordinates. And of course, if you add that up, half of 7 is 3.5, and that's the area of my first rectangle. Uh, my second rectangle, I have base lengths of 5 and 10. So it's going to be half the height. Let's focus here. Let's see if I can get my focus back. Half the height, which is 1, times the sum of the bases, which is, will be 5 and 10. Uh, half of 15 is 7.5, so I know that that area is 7.5. And then finally, half the height times the sum of the bases. It's 10 and 17 in this case. Uh, that's going to be half of 27. Half of 27, of course, is going to be 13 and a half. And so there's that area. Now, of course, the integral is the sum of all of those. So the integral is going to be approximately uh, 3.5 and 7.5 add up to 11. Uh, that's going to be 24.5 square units. Now, the units could be, it could be a velocity and a time. You know, let's say it's meters per second times seconds. That's actually going to end up when you multiply meters per second by seconds, canceling give you meters. It could be some kind of a distance or something like that. Uh, in this case, it's kind of a generic problem, so uh, I didn't really give you a value. But that's the general idea. And if you create more trapezoids, you get a more exact area for that region. Obviously, the fewer trapezoids you cre create, the farther off your estimation is going to be. Uh, but many computer programs actually use something similar to the trapezoidal rule to estimate area under curves. And they just use a lot of rectangles, and you can get an answer that's pretty accurate that way. 
You can also use the trapezoidal rule if you're given a table of values. And uh, basically, I would suggest making a quick graph. It doesn't really have to be to scale. The point is that it shows the information. So if I have a table that tells me a different, uh, different numbers of times and the meters per second that something's traveling, if you notice in this case the meters per second are dropping. So it looks like this is some object, uh, car, ball, something like that, that's slowing down over time. And we have a couple of data points. Um, again, we can only approximate the distance traveled because we don't know if it's sped up or slowed down or if it was a consistent slowing or anything like that. Uh, but we can estimate the slowdown using the trapezoidal rule. Um, now, I would suggest making a very quick graph. Uh, I start out with values as high as 30 and they drop all the way to zero. So uh, I'm going to do something like this. And I actually, again, I don't really care that much about. It's not a straight line relationship, but it's, it's decreasing anyway. And so here's time in seconds. Uh, it's going to end at 8 seconds. Uh, let's see, we've got a data point at 0 seconds. We've got one at 2 seconds, 5 seconds, 7 seconds, and then 8 seconds. Okay, again, not drawn to scale at all. But that's not really the point. The point here is uh, that we can fill in these values. So it's at a height of 30 at the start. At 2 seconds, if you go back and look at the original table, uh, it's got a height of 20. Uh, at 5 seconds, this graph has a height of 10. 7 seconds, it's a height of 5. And then 8 seconds, it's a height of 0. And we can use those values to find the areas of our trapezoids. So there's a trapezoid, there's a trapezoid, there's a trapezoid. Um, you could say this is a triangle down here at the end, um, but the trapezoidal rule, um, trapezoid area formula will still work. So you're just going to take half of each height times the sum of the bases, and that's going to tell you the area under that curve, which of course is going to be the number of meters per, seconds, uh, per second times seconds, which will just be meters, which is actually a distance traveled. Um, so for the first trapezoid here, um, we have bases of 30 and 20. Um, the height here is 2. Okay, so half of 2 is 1, 30 plus 20 is 50 square units, so I can write that in on my graph. Uh, for my second one, I have a base length, I'm sorry, a height of 3, and I have 20 and 10 as my two base lengths. Okay, that's going to work out to be 45, so basically between the second second and the fifth second. 45 meters were traveled, if I'm using those units. Uh, for my next one, it's half the height. It's going from 5 to 7, so that's a height of 2. Uh, we've got a 10 and a 5. So that's going to work out to be 15 units traveled. And then finally, from 7 to 8, I can take half the height. 7 to 8, that's a distance of 1. Not drawn to scale here, but it is a distance of 1. And you can say we have bases of 5 and 0. That'll actually work just fine. Um, you'll notice here, this ends up being half the base, and that's really just the height of the triangle. And so we still get an area here of 2.5. So we've got an area of 50, 45, 15, and 2.5. Uh, let's see. 45 and 15 add up to 60. 60 and 50 add up to 110. So that's going to be 112.5. And then again, if you go back and look at the original units, it's meters per second times second, which is meters. And that's your estimation. So you're really not doing anything different. If anything, it's a little bit easier if you're given a table of values because you don't have to substitute. You can just make your sketch, put everything into the trapezoid area formula. You don't have to substitute and, and plot the original graph like we did in the previous example. But uh, that's the basic example of how you would use the trapezoidal rule to approximate an area under a curve.